I'm Paul Brownstein. I'm an attorney. I maintain a general practice here in Southampton, Pennsylvania, right on Street Road. Once upon a time, lawyers who were in um, general type practices used to be on Main Street America. Street Road is Main Street in modern America, but right here accessible to where people come and go every day. I'm a solo practitioner right now, but I haven't always been. In my main line of practice, which is domestic relations law, family law, custody, support, and all the things that are going with that. But I also do some business work. I write wills. I do uh, trusts and uh, custody work. I handle real estate transactions, buying and selling houses. I get people incorporated when they need to. Or as somebody else once said perfectly well, I handle frequently needed personal legal services. I never charge the initial consultation, no matter what it is. I give you up to an hour because I'm thorough. I don't know how to do it in less, and I never charge for that. I will, at the initial consultation, always quote you what it's going to cost so you'll know up front in writing what it might be once I have a better idea what it is. And uh, I like to think I charge fair. My attitude is a very simple one. I do not charge a lot to not do a lot. I don't feel bad then if I have to charge a lot to do a lot. And I try my best not to do a lot unnecessarily. I haven't always been a general practitioner here on Main Street America. My initial work was when I got out of law school. For three years, I did not practice law. I worked for a corporation. I essentially did work for the corporation. I did operation stuff. I worked for the president. I did that kind of stuff. And then after three years, I took the bar exam and passed it. And my initial job out of law school was for a large Philadelphia-based company, which at that time had 105,000 employees. It's bigger now. And I was assistant general counsel. I did everything there is imaginable on the operations side, which means I handled contracts, civil litigation, uh, disputes with employees, uh, labor relations, all of the kinds of stuff that lawyers and companies do, but not as a general counsel. And then I went to work after about a number of years there, maybe five or six years, I went to work for a firm in Manhattan. And uh, there I had two different legal practices, one after the other. The last one there was on Park Avenue. So people hire me here today, they get a Park Avenue lawyer, but not the Park Avenue rates. But I give you the practice and experience I learned in that practice, because you have very large companies, very sharp people who want you to be smart all the time. They pay for it, but they do want that. And so here today, I am thorough, I'm efficient, I'm creative, and I'm very understanding what people's needs are. After a number of years doing that, I changed my life, I quit my job, I got engaged, I got remarried, I moved back to Pennsylvania, I became a general practice just about in one day. And uh, when I did all that, I retooled myself as a generalist, and I've been here ever since then. So my total years of practice are probably 47 years of being a lawyer, which is a fairly long time. I like to think I don't look it, but nevertheless, there are days I feel it. But I am uh, always ready and willing to see people. And that has something to do with why I came back here to become a general practitioner. You lose all of that when you work for a corporation and do big time cases, and I did, all over the country. And that is that you don't have the contact with the immediacy of the case or the clients anymore. Cases go on for years, and you're a part of a large team doing it. And because of that, you no longer have that one-to-one -one immediate contact, which I really like. In my current practice, if you hire anybody here, it's me. Like it or not, I'm the lawyer. I do it, and I do everything that has to be done for you. I have a very able assistant who, when I hired her five years ago, I said, I want you to be so good at your job that if I'm missing an action for six months, people don't notice. Well, I like to think they would notice, but the fact of the matter is she doesn't give legal advice. She's not a lawyer. Uh, I call her an assistant. She's more than a secretary. And she does hit on my clients very well. And she has what I'll call the soft side. She's very nice and charming and sympathetic and understanding, and my clients like her a lot. When you get me, you're getting essentially a doctor who's like a surgeon. I don't do therapy. I'm a doctor. I'm going to cut. I do, sir, I do counseling. I do a lot of it, and I like it. In fact, on my business card, it says for me, attorney and counselor. They're not different jobs. I'm emphasizing the two important elements of what lawyers really do. Attorneys are advocates. I pick up your sword for you. 
I jump on my horse, I'm your advocate, I get what you want, I go where you have to be, I put my shield up, I protect you, all the kinds of stuff in the days of old. On the other end, and frankly the more important end, I'm a counselor, attorney and counselor. That's advice, that's caregiving, that's advice and counsel to keep you where you don't have to have me be an advocate. The truth of the matter is, a lawyer who gets to go to court for litigation either has an extremely stubborn person to deal with on the other side, or God forbid, wants to lie on his own side, or because he's done something wrong. There's no reason to go to court because most of the time, especially in the main things that family practitioners do, the outcome's pretty predictable. And so you need to negotiate terms, and it's wise to do that. And that way you can save a lot of money because when you go to court, the lawyers always win, they get paid to go there, you don't. And you save aggravation. And as you learn every day in my business, and I did it today, I was in court. When you see a judge, honest to goodness, it's no sure thing. A judge is a judge and will do what the judge thinks is right, which may or may not be what your client thinks is right. And often, and judges will support this, other lawyers will say it, when you see a judge, the judge will likely make a decision that neither side likes a whole lot. But mostly the outcome is predictable. So you wind up going to court, there is every reason to think that most of the time it's going to come out pretty much, and I emphasize that pretty much part, not 100%, like it's supposed to. And so if you'll take counseling and get advice, you don't need to see the inside of a courtroom, which is no fun for anybody that's not a lawyer. It's my workshop. I like going there. I'm not bad at court. I think I'm pretty good at litigation, but that's not something that I think one should do. As to my practice, well, I do everything there is imaginable to do in family law. I, I do uh, uh, divorces. There's two kinds in Pennsylvania. You hardly ever hear about fault divorce. We still have that where one party's innocent, the other party's the wrongdoer. The old-fashioned stuff like adultery and desertion and cruel and barbarous treatment and so forth. But nobody really does that anymore because in reality, uh, if you prove the grounds for divorce, you get the right to be divorced and a very big hole in your bank account. Because you have to have a trial and people are always surprised to find that proving fault is not as simple as it is on television programs. Maybe I'll sign off here at this moment to say this. It's my favorite joke. I do not like to watch lawyer television so programs on television because I'll tell you what you see. A, the good guys always win. B, everything happens right away. C, nobody gives lawyers any money. Well, in real cases, they're exactly like that, except for those who things. When it really matters, the choice is simple.